Hi, my name is Alyssa Morin and I am with Easy Reader News in the South Bay. We are starting a new series called Beer With, where we have spent some time with a local South Bay resident. And today we are with Mike Sims of the Sims Family Restaurant. Hi Alyssa, good morning, good afternoon. <laughs> we can't hide the fact that we are drinking a beer at 9 a.m. That's true. <laughs> so tell me a little bit about um, you know, your family background and how you first got involved in, in restaurants around here. Well, actually, uh, it actually started with Grandpa okay. in the 1950s. He came, uh, he moved the family out from Chicago. Um, he looked at the cover of Time Magazine, and it was January, and there was people playing golf in California <laughs> on the cover, and he's wearing fur coats in Chicago, and he packed up my dad and his older sister and moved him out here. And, uh, Smart man. Yes, absolutely. <laughs> uh, got a job at Paramount Studios, uh, uh, managing the commissary there back then. That's where all of the actors and producers and everybody went to go uh, do their big meetings and sign okay. deals. And so uh, he got to know a lot of great people, a lot of famous people, um, and one of one gentleman he partnered up to open up his own uh, group of coffee shops called Arthur J's. Oh, cool! So he had about three or four of those. Um, met a gentleman uh, playing gin at Bel Air Country Club one day that said, uh, "I have a restaurant in, in Manhattan Beach. I have to sell." because uh, I'm retiring and uh, and wonder if you want it Artie and he said well I got a son coming out of college that needs a job so um, you know sure and that was the kettle so cool. um, and so that kind of got uh, my dad started in the industry uh, from there um, a few years later Mimi's launched in, mm -hmm. in, uh, in Orange County mm -hmm. with three locations um, in 1978 and uh, slowly but surely grew that into a great uh, company uh, that he um, um, sold in 2004, just as my brother was starting his small group of restaurants called Lazy Dog Cafes. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, I had a great, great time doing it. And then uh, kind of said, you know, it's time. Chris and Mike are coming along and they're hungry. Yeah. So it's, let's help them out. And uh, he, we've been very fortunate to have such a great mentor to help us along the way as well. That's great. So did you spend all of your youth in Manhattan Beach, essentially? And did you, uh, where did you go to school? Uh, listen, actually, I, I grew up in uh, San Fernando Valley, okay. the valley, uh, as a kid, and uh, did make some trips down to Manhattan Beach, um, uh, but my true affinity for Manhattan Beach came when uh, my brother graduated college, moved down here back with his high school friends. We, we both, uh, both went to Loyola High School okay. growing up, mm -hmm. but um, when he moved back from college with his, some of his high school buddies, I'd come and visit during college, and uh, coming from snowy Cornell University yeah. in January yeah. to bikinis and surfboards on the beach, I said, you know, this ain't bad down yeah, here. Yeah. And so, um, uh, you know, moved down here, actually, I didn't move down here until 2004 or 2005. Oh, wow. But um, uh, once I did, I, I knew it was going to be home. So you are the younger brother, yes? Yes. Okay, all right. So um, when when Chris got involved in Lazy Dog, um, was that kind of the impetus for you to jump in too, or did you kind of know already that you wanted to be in restaurants? Yeah, when I did, it was 2005 when he opened uh, Lazy Dog in Torrance, and uh, I was fortunate enough to have just moved back into town, and so I got to really kind of oversee the whole project from when they broke ground and through when they opened, and uh, I really enjoyed it, actually really kind of, it was my first uh, kind of uh, being part of a, a great opening and watching my brother do it, I was like, my brother can do it, I can do it. <laughs> it's one of those brother feuds that uh, is very healthy and and uh, you know, fosters a lot of great friendship. But uh, yeah, watching my brother open his first, or actually it was a second lazy dog, was definitely a, um, a good kick in the pants for me. Nice. So I know that Simsies is about three years old, um, which is just uh, about the same time that I moved to California, I moved to Manhattan Beach, or Hermosa Beach. And to me, it just seems like such an institution. It blows my mind that it came here around the same time that I did. Uh, did it? Did that success happen pretty much overnight, or uh, was there some nerves going into it? It's funny you mention that because uh, Simsies was actually what we call a story of lemonade—a certain kind of serendipitous uh, mm -hmm. uh, occasion where we were building Tin Roof Bistro, Chef Ann and I, mm -hmm. and we were intent on uh, making Tin Roof our kind of our just our lazy dog, I mm -hmm. guess you could call it. Mm -hmm. And um, we got into the city, plans all done. Uh, submitted for our construction permit, and uh, due to a technicality, um, we were actually delayed about 12 months. Oh, wow. And 
when uh, I walked out of the city, uh, having finally understood what the delay was going to be, I went to Chef Ann and said, we got to figure out something to do in the meantime. So we uh, literally started knocking on doors on Manhattan Beach Boulevard. Uh, it was 2009, so the economy was kind of in the tank at the time. Uh, it was actually definitely in the tank at the time. And uh, a lot of people were for sale, and so we knocked on a Bezos door, and the gentleman wanted to sell, and we struck a deal, and we said, you know what, we only have... It's 12 months, so we got to figure out how to make this work so that when we Tin Roof does open up, we're not spending a bunch of time on it. Mm -hmm. So as a result, we just kept it as simple as possible. Uh, beer on draft only, small, limited, but delicious menu, uh, really friendly uh, service, and you know, you never know when you, when you first open the doors uh, whether people are going to come in. But uh, the line out the door at Starbucks every morning kind of made me feel a little more comfortable <laughs> that at least we could get at least 10% of those people yeah. to come in, we'd be okay. So I know that Simsy's, um, before you were there, was a spot where a lot of restaurants had actually failed. And then you uh, opened a tin roof in a very unlikely spot in a mall parking lot. What do you think led to the success? Simsy's wasn't as much of a, a, a risk, I would say. It, Main reason is we knew what the kettle has, has done in the past. Mm -hmm. uh, Tin Roof Beach, on the other hand, uh, that was the one that kept me awake at night, yeah. uh, taking over an empty office space um, uh, to really turn into a restaurant. And uh, it, it was what made me love that location was uh, uh, one, it's Manhattan Beach, but two, uh, the courtyard uh, came out of um, where Susie Cakes is with my dentist, mm -hmm. Dr. Nafig. <laughs> so the irony is very rich there. <laughs> and you walk in and there's that brick courtyard with mm -hmm. the stone fountain and you can't hear the Sepulveda road noise and mm -hmm. you kind of look out and I just you know, envisioned a, a great bistro there. So as uh, someone who's worked in restaurants for a very long time, it's really cool and refreshing to see um, an owner like you who wanders into restaurants, seems to know almost everyone by name. Um, how do you kind of find that balance of, you know, being obviously the business overseer but also kind of hands-on yeah it's a balance is obviously anybody in any person's life if you know, any job and family or work and uh, deciding what's important what's not important it's uh, it is truly the most difficult thing but uh, fortunately we um, as I stated earlier like people first is um, one of our mantras so it, it makes it easy for me to decide where to what to do because and what to focus on because um, it, as people are our business uh, and they, as I said it just happened to serve food um, there has to be a balance because I love being in the restaurants and being with our our, our, our teammates and our and our guests uh, but at the same time I'm in charge of making sure that we have opportunities in the future for people to grow into so it's us trying to strike that balance um, but if I have to err, ever err I'll err on the side of being in the restaurants and instead of an office yeah so as someone who came into the restaurant uh, world pretty pretty young, um, is there anything looking back now, having learned everything that you have that you would have done differently? Um, and basically what advice would you give a young person who's looking to become a restaurateur now? Looking back on my career, I, would, I, I, I don't have any regrets truly. Uh, I would suggest, I think I, I made some great choices, obviously you don't make all great choices, but um, at least I learned from them, so that's a good, good start. Uh, I would say find somebody that you can truly learn from, um, that's willing to teach you everything they know about the restaurant business. Uh, uh, you know, I graduated from hospitality school at Cornell, and uh, my first job, um, I didn't use anything from school. Zero, <laughs> very little, maybe a little, but and nothing about uh, when I first learned from school uh, when I first started my first job. It, it, it was all about people and learning how to uh, manage and, and interact and uh, deal with people. So if I had one piece of advice, find somebody that you can um, you know, link arms with in the restaurant industry. You know, work your tail off because um, you know, um, the more hours you're in the building, the more hours you're learning. Um, and uh, just really dig in and, and, uh, and get passionate. Well, thank you so much for uh, getting up to, to drink beer with me at 9 a.m. And <laughs> be so candid. And uh, it was really great to chat with you. So thank, thank you, Thank you Alyssa. so Cheers. much. Cheers. <laughs>